Mish Mash! Kid Bash Corner! Hey ya! After the lovely reception I had for my last Kid Bashing video, I figured we'd keep it going. This isn't exactly part of the Hero Kid Bashing series, but don't worry. I've got plans for the next one soon. For today's video, I got my mitts on the Legionaries Kill Team box. I've just kind of been in a mood for some chaos -y nonsense. I kitbashed each miniature from this box using various methods, some being simple replacement of bits, and to others being more convoluted. I figure this way I kind of satiate everybody's palette. But with that, if you like what you see, leave a like, comment, and subscribe with notifications on for more videos like this. It really helps. Anywho, let's get into the kit bashing. So to start everything out, I did a little unboxing. I just kind of want to show you guys the exclusive sprue that comes with the set. Overall, I really like this kit. The modern chaos sculpts are really nice, but I do kind of miss the old sprue. A big part of this is the painting style that Heavy Metal used to use for painting chaos miniatures, but I have some more gripes that I'll talk in greater detail later on. For my kill team's overall feeling, I wanted to go for a squad filled with chaotic zeal. I began by attaching this head from the Cawdor gang set. The mask is very cult-like, and I like to imagine these dudes, despite being chaos marines, show humility to appease the dark gods. Despite their power armor and their gifts, they're still pretty low on the totem pole. To take this further, I pulled this Chaos Undivided banner from the previous generation Chaos Marine kit. I'd attach it using the standard bearer pole from the old Space Marine Command Squad, and I'd clip it to size. I cut it rather close, any further and this would be way too short. But overall I think this looks really good, I couldn't ask for a better fit, and he looks incredibly over the top. I like mixing the cartoonier bits of old with the modern parts. I think they work really well together. Due to how closely I snipped it, the banner itself is kind of pushed forward, mostly off of the backpack. To me, this looks a little bit more realistic, as the cloth would naturally hang. Keep in mind, I'm no genius, I was not exactly going for this, it just kind of happened. Happy accident. Despite the New Age miniatures being very crisp in their design, I think these old bits really work well. So I always try to make sure I have at least a couple sprues left over from my older age models. Random sparks of imagination come and go, and it's good to be prepared for it. For the weird anointed marine, I felt the bits included for the set were a little tame. Happy Halloween, ladies. I don't dislike them, but for the role of some sort of demon marine, I feel like they kind of fall short. I began by using this claw from the Gene Stealer Acolytes cult set. I began by applying sprue goo over the entirety of the claw, mostly over the chitin and to kind of block out those weird gene stealery elements of the claw itself. This being specific markings, the weird little vents that all gene stealers have, anything to make it look more like a natural claw. I'm not too worried about this being lumpy, I feel like making it look fleshy and deformed kind of helps me during the painting phase. This process is a little tedious, but it's worth it. Also, I got a couple questions asking why my sprue goo is green. It's because I used a kit from the older Kill Team sets where they had colored sprues. I always thought that was weird. I'd also fused together that double jointed arm, and after gluing it, I clipped a pauldron to size. I wanted to give the look that this arm just burst through the ceramide itself. Only issue I really ran into is that there was kind of an ugly gap. To rectify this, I'd peel down a little piece of sprue, and I'd use these little bits to kind of weld the gap between the arm and the body using cement glue. This takes a few go-overs, but at the end of the day I think it looks really cool. I'm kind of attempting to give the look that the armor and the flesh are somewhat fusing together. Also, yes, I do realize that I didn't give him a bolt pistol, but I don't know, use your imagination. I'm sure you could just squeeze it with his claw. I guess I kind of gave him two claws now that I really think about it, but whatever. He looks unique, he looks cool. 
He's my guy, not yours. Bleh. For the head, I used this old Plague Marine noggin, and I trimmed it directly in half to keep that gruesome mouth. I then do the same to this basic Chaos Marine helm, except this time I'm keeping the top. I then glue it together, and I created a truly fearsome and nasty looking demon marine. Once it's glued on, we're just going to fill in that little gap using some more cement glue and then it looks perfect. I'm super happy with this figure. I'm really glad that I inadvertently created the look of exposed skull. Freaking brutal. I have some really cool ideas in mind for how I want to paint this guy. I'm really, really happy with how this turned out. Despite all the little cracks and crevices this guy has, it works to the advantage of the miniature himself. He's supposed to look nasty, he's supposed to look feral, and just utterly corrupted, so all of this just works in my favor. Moving on to my gunner, I continue with the Cawdor gang parts. This pointed head with the candles is actually something I wanted to use on a Chaos Marine ages ago, hence the slight remnant of paint. I took the banner from the same kit, except I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted to fit it on. It kind of worked hanging off to the side, but I felt it looked a little busy. So over time I kept trimming until I was left with just the very top. And it fit perfectly between the wings of the power pack. I'm also happy I kept the skull on the back. This kind of gives visual interest on both sides of the mini. Also, not like it matters, but I decided to use a melt again instead of a plasma gun. I'm just a little tired of painting plasma, I guess. Not only did this fit perfectly between the two wings, once I added more cement glue, it fused together like one long piece. If you're familiar with my content, you'll probably know by this point I think I've milked every last bit I can out of the Kador gang parts that I can. I truly don't think I've built a single Kador gang member on its own, I think I've only ever used the bits for kit bashing. Like I mentioned previously, I don't dislike the anointed head, so I ended up using it for another marine. I still think it works really well with the context of these marines being heavily influenced by the ruinous powers. So using that and the bolt pistol arm, I ended up making a classic chainsword marine. Maybe not a figure I'll run a ton on the tabletop due to the team being very specialist heavy, but he's still a cool figure to have on the roster. Plus this pose makes him look really burly. It's like if you took Taz and put him in power armor. For my leader, I ended up using the weird sorcerer head, and I felt the markings and cocky expression were kind of perfect. I think it looks great on the Balefire Acolyte they designed for the box, but I have other ideas in mind for that mini. The demon blade and the head are kind of an obvious choice for a leader character. With the pose of the plasma gun, I think he looks really good. But to finish him off, I ended up using one of the icons from the base kit. This one in particular looks perfect. It really completes the mini all around. There's no second guessing what this guy is all about. Like I previously mentioned, I already had an idea in mind for the Balefire Acolyte. Nothing special, all I did was attach this old Slanesh melon from the old Chaos Marine kit. I'm kinda going for a more Chaos Undivided kill team, but I think the Slanesh Demon Head is more versatile in terms of their design. It kinda lends itself well being more ambiguously corrupted by Chaos. It really is just kind of a demon face of the horn. I kinda wish that the newer Chaos Marine kit had more bits dedicated to the four gods like the old one did. I know that each god kinda has their own Chaos Marine models now, besides Slanesh, but I don't think anyone would complain if these kits had some extra bits giving the marines a little bit more flavor for each god. Kind of a middle ground between being undivided to being somewhat favoring a particular deity. Also, I feel like I end up saying this every time I get a newer kit, but I wish the decal sheet had more options just like the old one had. I understand that the newer decal sheets are more dedicated to trimming down the factions in favor of giving more detail to each of the more popular ones, but it kind of sucks but that the Crimson Slaughter doesn't have any more decals and they don't have any generic chaos stars. Or generalistic symbolism for each god. Okay, mini rant over. For the Chaos Marine Butcher, I ended up snipping this part from an old Chaos Marine Terminator. I was going to put it on the knifey marine, but I feel like it fits much better on a crazy dude wielding a street lamp sized chain axe. I feel like these ornaments are more befitting to a guy that would pull your intestines out and use them like gym ropes. 
I glued this rather haphazardly to his backpack on purpose. I kind of wanted to make it look like he just mounted this on as he went. These guys might be undivided, but this guy certainly has his preference. This next guy was going to be the leader, but I kind of scrapped the idea once I settled on the hyperzealous theme. I then decided to give this guy a bolt gun. Given his pose, I trimmed the hand off one of the original Dark Imperium Marines, kind of giving a chaos incarnation of him. This really saved the miniature, as I really didn't know what else to do with him once I demoted him from leader to simple bolt gun marine. Oh, and his helmet came from the Raptors kit, which in my opinion is one of the most crisply designed and detailed products the GW's ever produced. I'm mostly saying this because this is kind of an older kit and it really holds up to modern standards. This basic knife hand worked perfectly for the overall pose, and all I really needed to do was clip the hand, clip the other hand, and glue it in place with my cement glue. One of my favorite parts about cement glue is that it really does cut down on the time I need to sand things down. That being said, the final two specialists in the kit I really didn't change up too much. I kinda dug their designs to begin with, so for both, a simple head swap was all that was needed. And the gunner just kinda got extra ammo. I don't think he exactly fits the theme of what I'm going for, but I think he looks fine on his own. The old school Skull Marine helmet works really well for the knife guy, and I feel like adding anything else would just detract. Overall, I think the effort that I put into each Marine paid off significantly. I am super happy with this squad, and I can't wait to paint them. Well, kind of. I, I can wait. I'm not exactly 100% sure how I'm going to paint them, but I'm like 67% of the way there, so... Regardless, it'll happen eventually. But hey, I think what we got done today was super fun, and I hope you feel the same. And I especially hope you found it helpful. If you did, why don't you give it a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and share this with a friend. Simple little clicks like that really help my channel grow. And it lets me know what you guys want to see. But I think I've flat my beak enough. Until next time, I'll leave you with a mishmash kit bash and paint some fantastic miniatures. And you're gonna. I promise. See ya.